Hi everyone, uh, I'm Marek Kadzierski. I work at Red Hat, currently I work in the Virtio Win team and today I would like to talk about uh, some interesting project, very challenging and very interesting that I'm working on. This project is related to development of Virtio Mem driver for Windows. Hence the name, Virtio Mem goes to Windows. But before I will start talking about some technical details, let me at first present agenda for this presentation. Uh, okay, the first thing I'm going to talk is about Virtio Mem in a nutshell. I don't want to speak into so many details about uh, Virtio Mem because there are some excellent presentations about this. So I just want to mention about for people who are not familiar with this. That's the first thing. And after that I will just jump into the challenges. And I will describe why the project is challenging and what are the challenges. Uh, I will describe two of them in details and also mention some other things. Uh, and then after that I will also provide information about uh, additional information like links to official page or some presentations or also references to my blog and then we'll have Q&A session. Okay, so let's start. Oh, Virtual Mem in a nutshell. Before I will start technical details, let me introduce and tell something about the concept. Uh, official statement for Virtual Mem is just more complex. It says that the basic idea of Virtio Mem is to provide a flexible cross-architecture memory hot unplugged solution that avoids mem limitation imposed by existing technologies, architectures and interfaces. So just simply put, Virtio Mem is a paravirtualized mechanism for adding removing memory tool from a VM. So idea is quite simple. If we have some guest I mean VM running and uh, for some reason guest needs more memory. We can just dynamically assign memory to this guest. Dynamically means that there is no need to power off the guest. If for example the host needs more memory then we can just remove memory from the guest and move it to the host. Of if there are other VMs that need some memory, we can just remove memory from one VM and just split it into several VMs. That's the whole idea. It's dynamic mechanism, so as I said, there is no need to switch to power of the virtual machine. Okay, that's a whole thing that is needed or that is mandatory in order to understand the concept. Worth to mention is that there are some mm, excellent presentations about this whole concept, about just ideas, uh, about the reasons of introducing new concept of Vitao Mem, and uh, everything is provided there. I will tell about it later, providing through providing links to the presentations and to the Vitao Mem pages. Okay, now let's just jump into that technical details, the challenge. Okay, so what is the challenge of implementing Virtio Man driver on Windows? The biggest challenge that describes the whole process somehow is just a lack of any documentation, samples or information about writing memory drivers on Windows. So there is basically nothing nothing that can be used, nothing that uh, somebody can learn from or just any information, official or unofficial, just nothing. And the only way of obtaining just secret information is to do a reverse engineering of kernel and existing memory drivers on Windows because such drivers for just the memory, they do exist. So, let's just think what is really needed at first in order to, if you want to just implement such kind of a driver, what really need? We need 
just a functions or some way to add or remove memory to the operating system to Windows in a very dynamic way and that's the whole thing because at the first I mentioned that the whole virtual mem is about adding or removing memory so that's exactly what we need to do and we also have to figure it out how to do how to implement it so two functions are needed one to add memory range to the OS and another one to remove the memory range okay the first step usually is to just look at the official documentation unfortunately official documentation mm, doesn't mention so doesn't provide so mm, much information except it mentions two functions mm add physical memory and mm remove physical memory however there are no there is no explanation detailed explanation about uh, two functions and also both functions are described as reserved for system use so apparently they are not planned to be used by system programmers However, however, before we start digging into the functions, it's just very important thing to look if the functions are somehow used in the underlying drivers or in the operating system. So the first step is just usually to look if you want to understand some functionality, if it's that's what you are looking for it's worth to take a look at the existing drivers and see if some of them are using mentioned functions uh, windows provides several drivers for um, various types of memory uh, i found at least three the first one was pmp mem the second was DM, was DMVC and there were also some drivers related to some special types of memory like persistent memory or, or DACs. However, the drivers related to that kind of memory were completely useless in this case because of the way how memory is implemented in them. So the only two, function, two drivers can be useful in order to extract required information. The first one is PNP mem. PNP mem sys. It's a just a plug and play memory driver uh, on Windows. Uh, this is rather old driver. It's been in the operating system for something like about uh, 20 years. Uh, interestingly, driver references to functions mm add physical memory and mm remove physical memory. So apparently that's what we are looking for uh, however the fact that functions are referenced it does not mean that they are actually used so it's the difference and another driver that should be analyzed which is uh, the MVC sys it's a Hyper-V dynamic memory driver this is very specific driver that is run uh, on, in guests guest running under control of Hyper-V, Microsoft hypervisor and this uh, driver references only one function mm add physical memory and this driver uh, provides functionality to add or remove memory to VM in a dynamic way so now let's take a deeper look at those two drivers the first one pnp mem uh, it's a plug and play memory driver uh, driver after dynamic analysis of the code and everything uh, the conclusion is that it uses mm add physical memory sys call to really add memory and uh, really this is really used so um, developers can use this call to add physical memory ranges to the system uh, of course if memory is backed somehow I mean the memory really exists uh, this can be used for this purpose uh, however when it comes to mm remove physical memory it's not clear because uh, analysis, of, analysis of the driver um, just uh, provided this discovery that revealed this fact that in 
this function is not used by driver. It's uh, referenced but not used. Uh, it can be used under special condition when one of the flag is set. I don't want to speak about uh, what are the conditions, but important thing is about this function that uh, it's not so useful in our case because this function in order to remove part of the physical memory or memory range from the system we have to know exactly which physical memory range we want to remove and uh, after adding physical memory to the system uh, memory that has been added can be already in use maybe not the full uh, but some, let's say, half of this memory. So really, really don't know which exact, exact ranges are currently used by operating system. So, uh, so this function is not so useful in our case. It's completely, let's say, useless because we really don't know which ranges we can remove. Uh, there is no API that can uh, return information about memory ranges uh, which are free which are not uh, maybe there exists such kind of API but I haven't found anything like that for my reverse engineering so just okay so let's skip this driver for now let's just focus on the MVC Hyper-V dynamic memory driver it's uh, not so old as the previous one because the MVC was developed for Hyper-V and this uh, driver uh, calls mm add physical memory really for add memory range to this operating system however when it comes to removing the whole memory range uh, it doesn't call mm remove physical memory probably for the reason that I described it absolutely makes sense because there is no API to just query which memory range is free or which was just already allocated. So, and for this, that purpose, it's interesting that this mm, driver uses uh, mm allocate node page for MDLX call that allocates some ranges of the memory and uh, Dibilis in details, uh, this function is uh, not so documented, it's, I mean it's do documented but the flag that is used by the driver mm allocate and hot remove uh, just removes the memory range from the system. Uh, the flag is not documented in official documentation, it's not documented at all, however it's defined in one of the header files that are provided with uh, uh, SDK. So that's how it was extracted. However, for reverse engineering, I have found this particular call, and that's how I figured it out and map finally this flag, I mean the value, hex, hex value, into the particular flag that has to be used. So that's, uh, there were two things related to adding and removing memory. And there is also another one challenging thing that is related to Hyper-V scenario. After enabling a Hyper-V, unfortunately, uh, mm add physical memory doesn't work. It fails with error HV feature is not available or something like that when Hyper-V is running. We can run Hyper-V in two ways, through installing Hyper-V, installing Hyper-V roles or through enabling VBS or virtualization based security. And after that, when Hyper-V is running, it's not possible to add physical memory. So further investigation uh, finally revealed that uh, this add physical memory syscall when Hyper-V is active uh, executes calls undocumented hypercall mm, the BC, 0BC uh, and this uh, hypercall is not documented however I have found the name from one of the mm, documents uh, that were provided by security researchers and it's described as HV call at physical memory so it looks like that this is something that is used to add physical memory 
and the question is why it doesn't work. After just doing some analysis of this hypercall in Hyper-V, which is a challenge because there are no symbols or anything, uh, it looks like that uh, Hyper-V Hyper -V checks if it's being run under Microsoft Compat compatible hypervisor. And if it is, then it checks one of the very special partition privilege flags that is called access hyper call MSRs. If the two conditions are met, so then there is basically no problem with adding memory. So what really need to do in this case? In order to make this function call working under Hyper-V, the hypervisor must be reported as Microsoft compatible and partition privilege flag uh, access hyper calls must be set. In order to do it, just it's enough to enable Hyper-V enlightenments under KVM. If Hyper-V enlightenments are enabled, then there is no problem with this function call and it's is finished with success. So I told about two different challenges regarding this implementation of Virtual Mem. Of course there are other challenges but I don't want to speak so much about them because they are not as challenges as the, the things that I mentioned before. But I can just let's say in short describe them like Numa support or just uh, checking because we are dealing with or testing because we are dealing with some area of the unknown so we have to make sure that uh, driver works in specific uh, scenarios like hibernate or something like that and also we have to pay attention to everything else that can be discovered discovered during development because as i said project is challenging and uh, this is very very dynamic uh, so, when it comes to additional information, if somebody is interested in this project, I highly encourage to visit Virtio.mem GitLab IO webpage that provides all information uh, that is required to understand the Virtio.mem. It also has some links to the presentation and everything there that can be used to learn about the project. I also highly encourage to visit my own blog, Our Windows Man. The, where I'm providing information about the development of driver on Windows and I'm also sharing some and, and other information just that can be used to learn more about Hyper-V or learn more about um, the KVM and low-level stuff related to virtualization on the um, Windows in particular, because the first one is about Linux, the second one, my blog, is only about Windows and Linux. Uh, okay, so that's basically all what I wanted to, to talk today. So now I think that we can go into Q&A section. So uh, thank you for watching and I hope that you enjoyed my presentation. See you next time.